blessing comes to this world only through the salt. And there's never very much salt. People aren't interested. They slap God on things in order to make them feel good about themselves. But God himself, who, who knows? Ask any Christian about what are God's attributes, what's he like, and you'll just get a parroting. You won't get any real, real understanding expressed. They're not going to be the kings. They're going to be the kingdom inherited. It's the Atsumim clause in uh, Isaiah 53.12. What Atsumim Yehalik Shala. It's uh, Isaiah 53.12. Uh, B. It's uh, and he will share out the spoils with the great ones. It's never properly translated in any um, published Bible. That's a scary thought. Think about it. You could be a king. But you know what? You're a king right now in training. Every thought I have when I put on my socks has got a king size value because God sees it. Same mechanism as the cross. God is always consistent. If it paid for sins, honey, it's paying for the blessing of this world, too. And if you are interested, I did a video called How God Orchestrates Time, and it traced out just how much blessing got produced by thinking that God liked to hear. It was in 490-year units. The world was purchased with 490 year grants of time beginning with Adam then Jared then Enoch that's what that Genesis 5 roster is basically telling you and the baton passed from Noah to Abraham 490 years later at the last minute and then it went to um, uh, J uh, not Jacob well Jacob got one too but it went to Joseph it shifted to Joseph when Joseph was only 17, when he was enslaved. And then 490 years after that, it shifted to uh, Moses. 490, And then from Moses, it went to uh, David. David got it. And David's were the last time grants. If Christ didn't come when he did, the time of the earth would have ended. That's why we're called the latter days and the fullness of times in the New Testament. That's how much thinking matters. So we own this place. We're not worthy, of course. But mom can make our thinking be divine quality and that justifies the world existing because the thought of the world is pretty ugly. So is ours. But you know what? We inherit. And we would like it very much if everybody on this planet inherited but, you know, they need their time and space to figure out if God exists or what kind of God he is. And they're all bollocked up with cultural issues. And, you know, the, if the God of one nation versus the God of another nation, same old arguments have been going on for centuries. As if God was a pet or something that, you know, a mascot for a team. We own this place. Everything that happens down here happens due to us. We own it. That's the hardest thing for me to accept. I have to treat myself as an owner of a vast portion. And their well-being depends on me? Well, then I need to kill myself. See why Christ wanted to do that? That was his future. Psalm 110. Of course, he had his Jewish kingship too, but the Psalm 110 contract is what we inherited. Vast tract of all these people are mine. I own them. But I want brothers, not slaves. And that passes on to us. So, for you atheists, if you're still listening and not too bored by now, 
As I said in the Bible Re-Atheism video, you guys are never to blame. The Bible never blames the unbeliever for what goes wrong. He only blames the believer, and that's very clearly outlined even in translation in Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. And of course, it's pretty much everywhere else. An example I didn't know existed was cited by uh, Dan Mill 23 in his um, videos about dung in the Bible. It's Malachi 2.3, and he correctly interprets it. Smearing with guts. This is what I'm going to do to the priests who serve me improperly. Yeah, because we own it. That's what's going to happen to me if I screw up. That verse applies to me. It doesn't apply to Dan Mill unless he believed in Christ sometime in his lifetime. But it applies to anybody who's believed in Christ at least once in his lifetime. So you see, rank has its privileges and its responsibilities. And I, I gotta confess, I'm screwing it up. So, I don't blame the terrorists, I blame me.